Today we're going to take a look at the power rule, both for derivatives and for antiderivatives. And we'll just make up a few examples. So let's start with derivatives. For Suppose you have a function f of x equals x squared. Then the derivative of that would be f prime of x equals 2x. Suppose you have a function f of x equals x cubed then the derivative of that would be 3x squared. So from this, uh, we can intuit a kind of pattern. One more, suppose f of x equals uh, x to the fourth, then f prime of x would equal 4x cubed. So you can see that we're always taking the exponent, placing it in front, and lowering the exponent by one. So this is x to the one here. The 3 is placed in front, and then we lowered the 3, made it 2. Here the 4 is placed in front, lowered the 4, made it 3. So if we want to write this version of the power rule generally, then it would be um, if f of x is x to the n, then f prime of x, the derivative of f of x, would be n times x to the n minus 1. What if you have something like this, though, f of x equals 3x squared? Well, if you have a constant in front like 3, then you're just going to multiply your exponent into that constant. So the 2 will get multiplied into the 3, making 6x to the 1. You lower the exponent by 1, so that would just be 6x. Or another example, if you have f of x equals uh, 9x cubed, then f prime of x would equal 27x squared because 3 times 9 is 27. Lower the exponent by 1, you get uh, that x squared there. And then the last example, now what if you have something like f of x equals 4, where you have a constant function? Well, you can think of this as 4x to the 0 because x to the 0 is 1. So then if we apply the rule, then f prime of x would equal... 0 times 4, which is 0, times x to the negative 1, because 0 minus 1 is negative 1. And 0 times anything equals 0. So anytime you have a constant like 4, then the derivative of that constant would be 0. So even if f of x equals 105, then the derivative of that would still be 0. So there's a bunch of fast uh, power rule problems for derivatives. But what about antiderivatives? Well, antiderivatives, we sort of go in the reverse direction. So if, let's say, original functions f of x equals 2x, when you're taking the antiderivative, which is done with this symbol, the part of the symbol is that s shape and the dx they bracket whatever whatever is inside of that. That's called the integrand, the thing to be integrated. An answer differential. Another way to say that is integration. We'll get into the difference in meaning between those two terms. But how, so antiderivative symbol is this s and this dx. So how do you do a problem like this? Well, this is asking if two x is the original function then what is the function whose derivative would turn out to be 2x? So, well, let me do an example or two. So if we do, we're asking ourselves, okay, well, whose derivative is 2x? Well, okay, I write x. Is it x to the 1? Well, if I take the derivative of x to the 1, that would just be 1x to the 0. That doesn't work because that's not the same as 2x. So scratch that. Uh, cancel that out. What about... Uh, Let's try x squared. If we say this is x squared, then we take the derivative of that to check. Well, the derivative of x squared is 2x, and okay, good. So we got back to the integrand. So this is our answer with the one. Uh, one thing is that we have to add a constant c because the derivative of any constant is 0. So whether this is uh, 8 or 2 or pi, any of these numbers would work for c. So our solution is a general solution. We say that x squared plus c is the antiderivative of 2x because if I take the derivative of this, I get back to what I had inside of my antiderivative symbol. 
Let's try another one. Suppose we have the antiderivative of 3x squared. Well, if we had that, then it's a little bit trickier because we have a constant in front of there, but we can still do this. From the previous example, we saw that our exponent increased by 1, so let's see if that works for this one here. Let's suppose you have x cubed as your antiderivative. Well, if we took the derivative x cubed, we would end up getting 3x squared, so x cubed plus c does work as the antiderivative there. What if you had the antiderivative of 4x cubed? Well, same thing here. Let's try to increase the exponent by 1. And let's see if x to the 4th plus c would work and get us back to our integrant. Well, uh, x to the 4th, the derivative of that is 4x cubed. The derivative of 0 is 0, or of c is 0. So, yep, we do get back to our integrand there. So, x to the 4th plus c works. What if we have something a little bit trickier? So, we have the definite integral of 6x with respect to x. And again, whatever these two things, you can sort of treat them like almost like the way parentheses work. So, whatever is inside of there, whatever is inside of this symbol inside of those two, this is uh, what you're going to take the antiderivative of. So we noticed previously that if we wrote, raised the exponent by 1, then that would help us to get on the right track. But the problem here is when I take the derivative of this antiderivative, I get 2x, and I want to land back on something that equals 6x. So I asked myself this question. Well, I had a 2, I get a 2 in front of there, what can I put in front of my antiderivative that would help me get back to the constant that's in front of uh, the integrand? Well, I, 2 times 3, that would give me 6. So let's try it one more time. If I take the antiderivative here, I get 6x. Okay, good. And I won't forget to add plus c. So this one's, the, this integrand has an antiderivative of 3x squared plus c, and you can always take the derivative of this to see if you get back to what you have there. So let's do one more. Definite integral of 27x squared. Well, again, I raise the exponent by 1, and I ask myself, okay, right now if I took the antiderivative of x cubed, or the derivative of x cubed, I would just get 3x squared, but I need 27x squared. So 3 times what makes 27? Well, 3 times 9 does, and then I add my constant, and there's my answer. If we wanted to write uh, the antiderivative power rule generally, then suppose you have the antiderivative of a function x to the n with respect to x, then the antiderivative, well, we know it's x to the n minus 1, we lo uh, n plus 1, we lowered, we increased the power by 1. But, uh, like if you look over here, x squared became 3. But then what about how we deal with these constants? Well, with a little bit of work, you can figure out that 1 over n plus 1 will be the constant that goes in front of there, and then plus c. So quick, uh, demonstration of that. Let's see if we add one or the definite integral x to the fourth dx then you would think uh, okay well let's see I raise the exponent by one so that becomes x to the fifth. Now the problem is if I just take the derivative of just this then I don't get back to x to the fourth I get back to five x to the fourth so what I need to put in front there is a one fifth and then that way when I take the derivative now I will uh, indeed get back to x to the fourth. And if you notice, uh, I don't know if you noticed this, but all these examples that we've been working with, they're actually in derivatives and antiderivatives, they've been the same. So with the 2x here, we took the derivative of x squared got 2x. Here we took the antiderivative of 2x got x squared plus c. Here we took the derivative of x cubed got 3x squared. And uh, the antiderivative of 3x squared takes you back to the original function x cubed. So with the last example that we did too, you can see the relationship of differentiation and anti-differentiation is such that 
uh, you can move back and forth between the two. So you can take the antiderivative of something and get to a derivative. If I take the derivative of this antiderivative, it would take me back to the integrand, the original there.